Hey everyone, this is Jeff of Tau Flittermouse. A few people have asked me to do a montage of all our lead plate shots. And can you believe we've been doing these since 2015? Now a lot has changed with the lead plates and also with our cameras. We were originally using a Casio EXF1 high speed camera, which would film at only 1200 frames a second and at a very small, kind of crappy resolution. Now at this time I started using a new camera called a Sony RX10 II. It had a little better resolution but only filmed at about 960 frames a second. I still use this camera but just uh, just as a regular real-time camera. Now the original lead plate was less than an inch thick and was just a little more than 15 pounds and we quickly learned that some slugs were powerful and hard enough to penetrate it. Now the intent of the lead plate was not to be able to blast through it but to leave a, a crater that we could actually measure and compare to other slugs. But for the most part the 15 pound lead plate was very difficult to penetrate even with a powerful foster slug. Over the years I had accumulated a lot of lead shot and I wanted to do something with it so I started melting it down in a uh, cast iron frying pan. And this thing's only about 8 inches in diameter or so. It's always nice to have a small target and, and, and a target that you can actually recycle and reuse again. We try to get several shots on the lead plate before we melt it back down again, get the most use out of it. Um, it is nice to have a nice clean lead plate to shoot at though. In a lot of these camera shots you'll see a, a bright orange flash. It could be a, a lead slug or a steel slug or even a brass slug and we'll see that. Sometimes we will see a, a plastic wad hit the lead plate and create a flash. I still don't know exactly what that is. There's no oil or any combustible material on the plate itself though. One important thing about the lead plate is it is relatively safe to shoot at. The, the slugs will typically come to a dead stop when they hit it. Occasionally they will bounce out of it and land maybe 10 feet in front of the target. And to be doubly safe, we usually put the lead plate at a slight angle, uh, maybe about 15 degrees left or right, and that will direct any fragments in a safe direction. I still get requests from viewers wanting us to shoot a gallium slug, you know, that metal that kind of melts at like 80 degrees. Um, it's a really interesting metal, and it worked really well as a slug. Unfortunately, YouTube decided to demonetize that video. <laughs> And that's the real shame is when a video is demonetized, it, no one ends up seeing the video because it's kind of hidden by YouTube. Now at this point, the lead plate has grown. It's uh, about 20 pounds and over an inch thick now. And it's thick enough that pretty much anything we throw at it now will not penetrate it. And it will leave a nice cavity that we can, again, measure and compare to other, other slugs. And right after this shot, we got the brand new Kronos 1.4 high-speed camera. The Kronos has a lot better resolution and a lot higher frame rate. I believe this was uh, 4,000 frames a second compared to 1200 or 960. That's pretty big improvement. The Kronos is also much more sensitive to light. No longer did we have to film on absolutely bright, sunny, cloudless days. We could actually film on days that were a little bit cloudy and dark. One of the benefits of getting the Kronos was all the comments from people saying I should go out and buy a $100,000 Phantom high-speed camera almost came to a stop. People assume that everyone on YouTube makes millions of dollars and when in reality we're making just a little more than minimum wage. The Kronos camera that I have costs $3,000, which is a pretty sizable investment, but we use this camera in almost every video that we produce. The camera will do up to 38,000 frames a second, I believe. Uh, it's very difficult to get good imagery at that resolution, though. But I find that filming between 3,000 and about 9,000 frames a second gives me a good balance of imagery and uh, frame rate. Some of the resolutions I use are real wide, but real short, something like 1,200 by 300. Uh, what I like doing in the video editor is tracking the object kind of zooming in and tracking it and it works out pretty well there's plenty of resolution to do that and this is what it looks like when I don't zoom and track in the video editor now in case you weren't keeping track of how many uh, impacts we've had so far this is number 26 I'm gonna shut up for a minute and just let you watch this <laughs>
Alright, at this time point, Danny started casting the lead plates too. He made the plates larger in diameter and also thicker. These are now weighing 30 pounds. And just for fun, he, he started painting them gold, which actually shows up better on camera. Even at almost two inches thick, some rounds manage to penetrate it still. Well, there you go, 58 lead plate impacts. I may have missed a couple of them but I think I got most of them anyway I thank you for uh, your video suggestions I thought that was a really cool idea to do a montage of the lead plate impact since we have done so many of them I didn't realize we did 58 of them though and I want to thank everyone for their support there could be just people leaving nice comments that give us emotional support uh, to the people that are channel members and also patreon members thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed it and keep those suggestions coming we'll see you next time